Visions, a history of the Royal School for the Blind, Liverpool. As told by three young people, two boys and a girl, and two older gentlemen. This takes the form of talking heads against a background of an optician's illuminated eye chart. Just walking through the front door to an unfamiliar place. You could feel the buzz and you could feel the happiness of everybody. A young person's hand running along a wood panelled wall. Walking on past a tiled pillar. I remember walking down the corridor just being able to have that new feeling of it's a new place, it's a new beginning. In the original School for the Blind, the children or young adults, whoever were there, they were only allowed to do whatever it is that was provided for them. A sepia photograph of a group of pupils in a shoemaking workshop. For example, like basket making, rope making or whatever it is. A young person handling and smelling rope. It would have been hard for them. But if that's the only thing I could do, I'd probably do it. In them days, you still probably would have felt grateful. Honestly, I'd just turn around and refuse to go and do basket making. I'd just end up sitting in the house and not doing anything. Two older gentlemen sitting side by side. I went to what, the Waverley School for the Blind in the 50s. In, in those days, yes, you, you went into law, physiotherapy, um, and then the trade, the, the piano tuning, shorthand typing, secretary work. I suppose in a way I'd feel very isolated because it's just that one thing. A young person playing a cello. They're not given an opportunity to expand more It was different because you were away from home. I mean, when I was at junior school, I had, some of it was really quite unhappy because I wanted to be at home with my mum. It's better than it was because it's Monday to Friday, then I'm home for a full weekend, and then I'm back again. But I love it here, so it's good. Off I go down to London, get the train down to Euston, um, had to get the, the, the underground down to Charing Cross, Get a train out from Charing Cross to um, Elton Wellhall Station on the, the southeast edge of London. Get a bus to the college. Get, get to the college, round the duck pond, into the place, and waiting for interview. So I go in for interview, and this person from the far corner speaks up. She said, um, "Can I ask Mr. MacFarlane, this blind person, how much of a burden are you going to be to other students?" <laughs> no, in a sense, blind and visually impaired people won't be a burden. And yes, we do need to be better than others, because if we're not, employers are just going to go for the ones that the safer option and not actually take a risk and go with a visually impaired person or maybe even a blind one. So the only bit of bullying I've really came across, I'd say, would probably be when I was in year one, year two, because I couldn't see, he wouldn't just come up to me and start punching me he'd like come up and sneak up behind me and like do it and things like that. And they just wanted to be mean because the young boy was different. It almost sounds like the bullies didn't get that. I don't think it would happen now, but then you still get people saying comments because I had a comment a couple of months ago to me and yeah, so I think you still get other people out there with comments like that. Hearing Frank and Joe, they've like made me more determined. A young person holding a microphone and wearing headphones. So Joe, yes, you've got an MBE. How did it come around of you getting an MBE? Um, how to know friends and influence people as well. <laughs> no, I was lucky. The biggest shock I ever got. I became involved with long cane mobility. A wooden frame holding long grey canes with balls on the tips. This was before the RNIB had, had got to any mobility centre. There was no long cane or, um, or a hoover cane as we called it in those days. A pair of fluorescent yellow trainers walks down a corridor with a long grey cane. It was actually a, a planned lesson. 
which was the perhaps the most important thing that we were doing. To help instruct uh, with long cane was one of the most important, vital um, facets of education for blind people. So the feeling of having a cane with you makes your body more, well, I'd say it makes the blind person more safe, well, feel more safer. You just learnt your way around and you learnt to get around so that you didn't sit down around doing nothing. So different lifestyles, certainly, but um, there were lots of advantages of going to a special school. And you, you were always willing to do it because you, you had this empathy with the kids. One of the older gentlemen walks down the corridor. A young person's hand reaches out. I remember walking down the corridor. You could feel the buzz and you could feel your heart. To hold on to the arm of another young person. I can be the way I want to be and plan my future here. And I just remember being so happy that I'd had that opportunity to become a new person. In memory of Joe Lambton, MBE, 1928 to 2017.